Cancerians, hello. For those of you who have been here before, welcome back to you. And for those of you for whom it is your first time, welcome to you. I'm Denise, this is Surrender to the Flow Tarot, and I'm going to do a timeless general reading for the collective of Cancer. Cancer Sun, Moon, Rising, Ascendant, or Venus. It's a general reading, so it's not gonna resonate with everybody. Take what does, leave what doesn't. Be careful not to put yourself into a story that isn't yours. You don't want to relate, you want to resonate. Okay, so I missed last week's readings for all the signs because I have vocal cord issues and I start speech therapy a week from now. I am supposed to, they didn't tell me I couldn't do readings. <laughs> they told me I was supposed to take 30 minute break in between each one, which has been kind of difficult. Um, but I did just rest my voice for over a little over an hour. So we'll see how this goes. So I'm doing kind of modified versions of readings this week. Of course, I picked a deck that requires a lot of talking and reading. So um, today's reading is going to be a little bit different. You might want to get out a notebook or something. Get ready to like take some notes down. We're doing what divine feminine deity can you call on right now and we're going to end it with a um a heart thoughts card i think i forgot to pull this oh my gosh did i forget to pull these cards for aquarius and gemini i may have Gosh, I'll have to go back and look. Holy. Well, hopefully I won't forget for y'all. Okay. <laughs> I think I did. Oh, no, I didn't. Wait, I did for... I might have forgotten for Gemini. Okay, anyway. Sorry about that, Cancer. What, what do you care about a Gemini? You don't care nothing about no Gemini. All right. So, um, here we go. We're going to get started. Hope you all are doing well. So these are just divine feminine deities. Doesn't matter what gender you are. Um, this is just a divine feminine deity that is present in your your frequency right now, in your vibration. And you can call on for help and support. I knew you were going to get more than one. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, it's three. It's just so much reading. Okay. You got Lalita, the red goddess. Playfulness is a spiritual power. Laughter leads me back to the light. Another sign got this, and I can't remember. It was. It's either Aquarius or Gemini. Maybe it's Gemini, and that's why I keep... No, it's Aquarius, I think. Yeah, it was Aquarius. Akilanda, Akilanda, the goddess of never not broken. Everything happens for my liberation. I choose to become only more love. These are intense, Cancer. And Diana, queen of the wilderness the language of the natural world is a frequency of love this is my mother tongue okay a lot going on here i want to hold them up together So there's like a lighter energy to some two fairly serious energies. But I feel like this might be a rebirth kind of a thing, like a phoenix from the flame thing for you. But let's see. Ooh. 
Lolita is a call to remember your your playfulness and the lighter side. 88. Okay. I'm going to read all of it because I think it's probably, there's important parts in all of these. It's going to, it's just going to be hang in there. Okay. Cause we've got three of these to read and there are many pages, four pages each. Lolita represents the spontaneity that graces a heavy moment. Right. That's kind of maybe what this one, that's what this is feeling like the heavy, like something is going on. And this is a way to ease it and help heal it. Lolita represents the spontaneity that graces a heavy moment and reminds us that joy is a powerful spiritual practice. Lalita Tripura Sundari is a Hindu deity, deity known as the Red Goddess because of her connection to desire. She's often depicted sitting on a lotus with 16 petals, known as the fulfiller of all desires. So definitely the lotus is symbolic for you, and especially right now. So if you see it, take it as a confirmation that you're on the right path. Maybe you want to put things lo with lotuses in your view too, you know, and definitely look up Lalita and call on Lalita. Okay. She's holding a golden bow that represents the mind and five golden arrows that represent the five senses. And the ancient devotional text dedicated to her, the Lalita Sahar Sahasra Namam is a list of her 1,000 names that fulfills all of the desires of a devotee simply through its recitation. recitation. So definitely look up the Lolita, I'm gonna spell this, S-A-H-A-S-R-A-N as in Nancy, A-M as in mom, A-M as in mom. One of Lolita's many names is she who plays. The Sanskrit word Lila means divine play. Lalita loves when her devotees are able to move beyond dualities to the point where we are not separate from what we desire. She loves puha or ritual worship for this reason, because it moves us from out of our ideas and thoughts of the divine and into our hearts where we can experience the divine directly. Lalita is known for her spontaneity and for liberating her devotees with joy. She's the consciousness that comes when we get so caught up in taking ourselves seriously that we forget the profound, simple pleasures like sunlight on your face or the taste of a ripe strawberry. She's the delicious moment when we remember that we don't have to take everything, especially ourselves, so seriously. We don't have to be perfect or know the right mudras or yoga poses or chant for hours on end. What's divine is inherent in us. It's remembered, not learned. When your soul selects her card, answers arrive from disengaging with the energy that created the problem or question to begin with. We so often hold tight to what we desire with a grip that actually inhibits it from arriving. And we often take the soul by the collar and demand to know an answer right now. So this is asking you to have temperance and give surrender to the flow for sure. When a desire is in an imperative, there's an inability to be playful, imaginative, and childlike with how and when the desire will arrive. The secret to desire is holding it lightly. The secret that the red goddess knows is that we already have everything we desire. Look up the vortex in Abraham Hicks. So we can trust that what the soul craves is and always has been ours. This is the levity that sparks a shift, a change and expansion. This is the moment that we remember we are not separate from what we desire or from the divine. Lalita is the brilliant moment in a fight between lovers or friends when suddenly one mispronounces a word and both crack up laughing. She's the levity that comes when we loosen our death-like grip on what we think we desire. 
She's the gorgeous, much needed reminder that we don't have to suffer our way to what we want most. The path to what we desire and to becoming the soul we need to be in order to receive it can be paved with joy, with divine play, and with the sacred process of lightening up all along the way. Your soul voice meditation is, how can I add more playfulness to my life right now? Your intention is playfulness is a spiritual power. Laughter leads me back to the light. So it's about delight to like delighting in the moments and trying to stay in your heart space and trying to choose the thoughts um, even in a moment of ups, like upset or sadness or conflict. It's to take this step back after you determine it's safe for, your, for you, you know what I'm saying? And look at the aspects that are gifts. That are, where's the beauty in this? I know this is difficult. It's not like this is going to be an easy thing, but just look at it from a lighter perspective, maybe from your inner child's perspective. You know what I mean? Innocence and, and for the good of everything. And call on Lolita in those moments. Help ask Lolita to show you the lighter side to guide you to the lighter way um, to deal with whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's look at Akilanda. Akilanda. Because y'all are going through something. Oh, Akilanda is the first one. No, she's the first one. She's just the first one listed because they're in alphabetical order. Someone listen to me. She's not the first card. What? 96. It. I opened it to this and I'm just going to show you. Sarada Devi, the Divine Mother. So maybe if this resonates or sparked anything in any of you, Google that, okay? The goddess of never not broken. I'm really curious about this one. Akilanda represents the essence of the phoenix. She's the indestructible energy that embraces change. She knows that everything is conspiring to transform her into only more love and light. That's a good way to look at stuff, but that's a hard way to look at stuff in the middle of heartbreak or something terrible, you know, but it is a really good thing. I would, I would run that through my head. What is here to transform me into more love and light? This is here to transform me into more love and light. Where is the love and light, you know? Akilanda is an elusive goddess from Hindu mythology. Her full name is Akilanda Ishvari. Ishvari in Sanskrit means female power or goddess. Ooh, I feel that in my loin. I feel it in my root chakra. I'll have to write that down. Oh, write it down right now. Ta. Okay. Akilanda means never not broken. So she is the goddess of never not broken. She can never be broken because she always is. It's very confusing. She is the embodiment of what we try to avoid, the dissolution of our ego's identity. Her power is unparalleled. She radiates the potent light and joy. That's the goal of change, transformation, or pain. Okay, I just want to say something. Cancer, you are the queen of cups. The queen of cups is the embodiment of unconditional love, agape, right? Just never ending. You are that. This is what this is saying. It's what is at the base of everything. You know what I mean? There's very little written about her. She's meant to be known through experience. She's an intimate interior goddess that we meet when we are in the darkest moments of grief and heartbreak. She shows us where our energy is trapped, where we have been stifled in routines or others' expectations of us. 
and she whispers the liberation we will experience once we let ourselves break open and allow the new expression of ourself to come blazing through. She whispers the liberation. It's dope. I want to whisper liber. I want. I would love for my guide to whisper liberation in my ear. She reminds us that we always have the power to choose to see every event as yet another opportunity to become more light, to become more of the radiant soul we are here to be. When your soul selects her card, many of us expect tremendous, many of us exert tremendous energy in the effort to not break or fall apart. We, re we, re we resist our grief, our heartbreak, or we deny the need to change until the choice no longer feels like it's ours. Something sideswipes us in our or ordinary life and shatters who we think we are and how we identify ourselves. Here's what Akilanda reminds us. Vulnerability is our greatest strength. If we are always broken, we can never break. This is really strangely put, right? Akilanda is the most intimate and personally powerful goddess because she meets us in those moments when we can feel most alone, most exposed, and most afraid. She models how to thrive in the midst of change. She uses pain to joyfully and purposefully transform. She sees everything as an opportunity to release what isn't serving her. And she knows that being broken isn't a failure or something we should avoid. It's actually the whole point. It's reminding me of the Japanese art of when like a ceramic, something ceramic breaks apart and they glue it, they put it back together with that gold and they, and it's so beautiful. And it's like, that's what the intention was. That's what this is reminding me of. She knows that being broken isn't a failure or something we should avoid. It's actually the whole point. We are here to let our idea of ourselves go up in flames so that beneath the ashes, the soft core of who we truly are arises. And so that we remember that it's not the heart that ever breaks. It's the ego. The heart only ever expands. It can get wounded though. It's that trust piece. That's not, n n I don't agree that that's ego. You know what I mean? Your soul voice meditation. What heartbreak can I see now as an opportunity to expand? And your intention, everything happens for my liberation. I choose to become only more love. So clearly you're going through it and it's deep. But there is, there is, there's a lot of opportunity in this for you to see a lighter side of it. It's there, it's coming up, you know? I feel like it's the like balance between like uh, youthful and mature, but not youthful in a bad way at all. Like the good aspects of, of youth and the good aspects of maturity. So let's see what Diana is. My poor throat. Diana represents the call to embody a more primal connection to the wildness that exists within. The goddess Diana was worshipped in the ancient Roman religion that originated in Italy. She's the daughter of Jupiter and Latona, born on the island of Delos, with her twin brother Apollo, god of the sun. The temple of Diana in Rome dates back to the 6th century BCE. She was the protectress and patroness of the lower class and slaves who, would, who could seek sanctuary in her temples. The temple to Diana in Ephesus, also attributed to Artemis, was considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. 
it took 220 years to build. And the magnificent statue of Diana covered it in breasts symbolizes her worship as a fertility goddess for women. Paul in the Acts of the Apostles in the New Testament mentions Diana's temple since her following was extensive as seen, and seen as a threat to Christianity. The most famous place to worship Diana was in the sacred grove of oak trees on the shores of Lake Nemi near Rome. Out in nature, connected to the earth and to the wild animals that roam freely across it, here she is the huntress with her golden bow and arrows. She is the independent, free-spirited goddess who comm communes with the moon, the natural world, and all those who cannot speak for themselves. When your soul selects her card, sometimes the answer is the simple elemental need to just walk barefoot in the grass or even better than mud. Sometimes we get so caught up in what's happening or what isn't that we forget to just be. We forget that there's tremendous power surging up from the earth, wanting to take what, whatever energy is no longer serving us. We forget that we can commune with the trees, those ancient protectors and elders whose language comes with the help of the wind and the slow, soft caress that touches our cheek. Answers sometimes need to come from the basic desire of the body to feel grounded here on earth. Diana is associated with fertility, the phases of the moon, and the ability to communicate with animals. Of course, not with any human language. I feel like she's queen of pentacles. Also the empress part, you know what I mean? But with the frequency of love and intention, which animals perceive, if we open ourselves up to it, we can connect to the wisdom in the natural world, even if we live far from it. Even if we're deep in the heart of the busiest city, a sign on a bus, a logo on a t-shirt, or a card someone sends us may carry an image of the animal that wants to reach us. Or we may be visited by a possum on the fire escape or a hawk on a window ledge. We don't have to be in the wilderness to access the wisdom of the natural world. The wilderness is within us. We are a part of it. There's so much more we can receive from the wordless, from the wordless life all around us. We just have to develop the heart that can hear it. Interesting. So this is about you forgetting a primal part of yourself, right? You need to reactivate or activate some part of you that has been sleeping or quiet. A part of you that is wild and feral um, and raw and beautiful. And strong and playful and resilient. So interesting. I'm so curious if there's an animal that presents itself to you, would you mention it in the comments? I don't have anything to pull to like figure out what your animal guide is, but what you could do is YouTube search animal guide meditations and see what pops up for you. If you don't already know what your animal guide is, and if you do know, it's time to get reacquainted with it and call on it for, for help. Your soul voice meditation is, what spirit animal has medicine or a message to give me in this moment? And your intention is, the language of the natural world is a frequency of love. This is my mother tongue. Yeah, all right. All right, Cancer. Let's get your heart thoughts card. So you are healing from some kind of heartbreak, from, from heartbreak. I don't know if it's from an intimate, it's definitely from some kind of intimacy, but I don't know if it's romantic or familial or what. And this reading is very much asking you to call on these divine feminine deities to help you realign yourself and to help you stand strong in, in who you are. Yeah, let's see what your heart thoughts card is. Ooh, that was lovely. I bless my family with love. Watch the Aquarius reading if you have Aquarius in any of your placements, okay? Or you're dealing with someone who is an Aquarius, watch the Aquarius reading. 
I love and accept each member of my wonderful family. They in turn love and adore me. All is well in my world. I bless my family with love. So we're not talking about people who are toxic or abusive, okay? But we're talking about a conflict with someone that you love very much. And what this, this whole reading is saying is to remember your inner child and maybe remember theirs. Look at them and approach them how your inner child would. You know, like your best friend when you were a kid. You know what I'm saying? See if that helps at all. Okay. Cancerians, thank you for coming and sharing your time and your energy with me again. And I hope this helped. And hopefully I will see you next time. <laughs> hey, bye.